Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And what a joy it is to gather uh, here with you all in the chapel in our, in our remnant. And also for all those that are watching, um, especially for you students as you make your way through finals week. We know there's uh, a lot going on for you as you look to finish this semester well. And uh, we certainly are praying for you and thinking of you uh, in these times. And we have a marvelous text this morning as we look to John 14, words from Jesus to guide us back to his plan for all humanity. The plan that the Father had given him uh, on our behalf in the way that he has won us all back to the Father and we stand in that Easter victory and that resurrection promise once again this day. So we continue now with the invocation followed by the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from John 14, verses 1 through 14. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we praise you that you are who you say you are. Even when we lose sight or can't sense or understand it, continue to guide us in all things and strengthen us by the power of what you've already accomplished for us, your death, resurrection, and new life. Help us to see you at work again today, for that is enough. In your name, Jesus, amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you this morning from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, before the days of smartphone turn-by-turn -turn directions, and for those of us who didn't invest in a Garmin GPS for their cars, there was a website that helped you navigate and get to different places. That website was called MapQuest. And you could print out, hopefully on one computer sheet of paper, directions to any place you might have trouble finding. My first big experience with MapQuest was leaving for college, coming here actually to CUW from a town in central Illinois, Quincy. And this seems simple enough, right? I'm not doing what my dad had to do on all our road trips. I didn't have to balance an atlas on my knees and look up exit numbers and different highway and road intersection points. I just had to follow some simple directions, printed out step by step, road by road. The only problem is there were some really confusing steps. I headed generally northeast across Illinois to get to eastern Wisconsin, but two of my directions were merge onto I-74 west toward Moline, Rock Island, and take I-80 west toward Davenport. 
And not once, not twice, but countless times I'd stare at that sheet of paper as I was driving in my Chevy Cavalier and I would doubt those directions. How can I be headed northeast if I take 74 and 80 west? They seem so backwards. But it turns out they got me where I needed to go. Because these particular stretches of highway on my directions, they actually went north. Just long enough to connect to another road headed for scenic, often chilly, Mequon, Wisconsin. How are you with directions? Are you one of those gifted, spatially aware people who have a knack for knowing exactly where they are and you can get familiar and accustomed to your surroundings in an instant? Or are you completely smartphone dependent, punching directions to that Starbucks you've gone to dozens of times just to be sure and no shame in that? In our gospel text for today, we get some good news for all those who might feel at any time directionally challenged. In John 14, Jesus is talking with some of his disciples and it starts with a great promise. Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. This promise, it was met with concern and confusion, and maybe some fear. Thomas speaks up, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And then Philip chimes in, Lord, Show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Just give us a sign. Something real, something extraordinary to hold on to, and that will do the trick. These disciples, they couldn't see how Jesus' ministry and his mission were going to pan out. They knew that they were moving with him from point A to some unknown, yet to be discovered point B but they didn't fully know how to get there. They didn't fully understand what God was doing and how he was moving his kingdom forward in their time and space. And by the way, all of this comes right after Jesus had gathered with his disciples in that upper room after he had washed their feet and even communed with them. You'd think they'd be strengthened and preserved to face whatever's ahead, but now they seem to just be stuck. Stuck somewhere between Maundy Thursday and Easter Sunday. Stuck with a lot of questions as to how all this was really going to work out for Jesus and for them. So how about you, follower of Jesus? Are you feeling stuck at all these days? Do you know the promises of God but are still filled with your own kinds of questions? How is this going to all work out. Jesus, I love you and I want to listen to your voice, but this road I'm on, it seems so backwards. So much doesn't make sense right now. And I'm not sure if I can see a way through things. I'm unsure and scared and concerned, and I'm filled with so many more questions than it seems I have answers right now. Oh, and after all this virus stuff, murder hornets, really? Can you help us, God? Can you just give us a sign and make a way? You know, a time that you'll often hear this text outside of a regular church service is at a funeral. This is a text that's looked to to bring comfort and consolation for those who have lost someone special in their lives. Maybe in some ways that's fitting for us right now. Most of us might not be grieving the loss of a loved one, but we are all grieving something, I think. We're mourning the loss of meaningful goodbyes, left without the chance to really leave each other well as we head into summer. We're missing out on celebrating together something that our hearts are yearning for right now. 
And I firmly believe that the time is coming, but I don't totally know the next time that I'll get to see you again. And when we'll get to see this chapel filled up as we worship God together here. And this void, this absence, it's frightening. And it fills us with some fear and questions. But in all the doubtfulness and dissonance, the voice of our Savior calls out to us called out to Philip and to Thomas and that voice it rings just as sure and true for us today let not your hearts be troubled believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many rooms if it were not so would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to take you to be with myself. That where I am, you may be also. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, the good news of our God is that he's not only trying to move us from point A to point B through the struggles of an earthly life to get us to an everlasting heavenly one. In the Bible, it's so much more than just a printed kind of quest for us to follow so that we can map out our lives accordingly and reach a good destination for ourselves. Our faith is so much more than that. And Jesus doesn't just help us get to point B. Jesus tells us, I am point B. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am your roadmap, your vehicle, and your destination. You stick with me and I won't just show you the way. I'll become your way through anything. You've been with me all this time. Don't you know? I'm your way maker. I am your Lord and your Savior. I'm your sin conqueror, your servant leader, your abundant life giver, and I am the greatest sign that God could ever send to you. And don't for one moment buy into that devilish lie that I'm not at work right here and now. You're not stuck between Maundy Thursday and Easter Sunday. You are living in the everglow of my empty tomb my victory for you. When it comes to our direction, God and his word, they really do serve us as voice command. We might not know and anticipate every turn in our journey, but we know where we can turn to. For have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. There are still so many uncertainties for us right now, I know. Many questions as to what comes next. Maybe your next turn seems unclear at this point. But know this, God will never leave you to sort this out on your own. He has given you the greatest miracle in this world. He's given you himself. And he's given us each other as his church. He's breathed his spirit of life within you, marked in your baptism. We know Jesus. And because of that, we know that wherever we go, it will be good with us, even when our present situation seems not so good. So let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus has made the preparations. He's with you. And he comes again for you. May that always be enough for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now gathered together as the bride of Christ, God's church, we are privileged to come before him in prayer. For all those prayer requests that remain on our hearts and minds, we gather them together to bring before our Heavenly Father. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again this day for who you are and for what you have done for us, for the life, death, and resurrection of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you would continue to build us all up into the one true faith. 
be our strength and support through uncertain and difficult days and continue to lead and guide us in all things as our way, truth, and life. We pray especially for all those who are struggling against sickness and disease, especially those affected by the coronavirus. God of healing and mercy, draw near to all that we know and in all the world for all those people who are fighting against illness. Heal their bodies and bring them peace in their affliction. Help to ease any pain they feel and use any means necessary to bring them wholeness and restoration once again. Dear Father, we pray for all households and homes. We thank you for the gift of an abundance of time together with our families. We thank you for parents, grandparents, siblings, and all those we care for so deeply. Be with us and strengthen our families that we would be drawn closer to you and to each other as we walk together with the support and care we can offer one another. Finally, Father, we pray for all students who are finishing this week of finals. Give them endurance to finish this academic year well. We pray especially for all seniors moving on. Provide for them as only you can. Open doors of opportunity to them that they would go out to boldly live our mission of service to you in the church and in the world. All these prayers we lift to you knowing that you hear us and are faithful to answer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now go with God's promised blessing and benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen.